entertain and anoint To be a man on your set Dance in the rhythm of your heart Thank you. We bless your holy name for bringing us together once more at your feet. We thank you, Lord, for mercy. We thank you for your grace. We ask that in any way we have fallen short of your mercy, we ask for forgiveness. And Lord, even as we go into the word, even as we break the bread of life, we ask for wisdom. We ask for an open heart. We ask for a spirit that is willing to receive. And we ask for a heart that is fertile so that your word can sink in and bear fruits. We come against every spirit of distraction and confusion, oh God, and let the word that you're about to speak to us about, Lord, let it help us and let it take root. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Um, praise God. Um, so today we'll be continuing on our series, um, The Whole Armor of God, which is on the spiritual warfare. Um, so today we'll be discussing the helmet of salvation. Um, but before we go into the helmet of salvation, can we just do a quick recap of what we studied last week? Who can remember the topic from last week or anything you learned or anything you took? <laughs> Or anything you practiced during the course of the week. We have anyone that wanna share? Yes. Praise God. Um so last week we were learning about faith, um, the shield of faith. And one of the things that I learned is that um that our faith is in God, first of all. And then secondly, that it's it's not really the, our faith is not in the outcome. So regardless of how, how things go, that we should be able to trust God to the very end. And I was encouraged because uh, I think it's in Hebrews, uh, when we're learning in Hebrews 11, 13, that many heroes of faith died in faith, having not seen the promises come to pass. So I was really just encouraged that um, we should have faith in God. And then one more thing I learned is that faith is like our first line of defense in, in this spiritual battle. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's amazing. And and that's also something that actually stood out to me last week that, you know, my faith is not really hinged on the outcome, on, you know, if the, if the situation will change or not, but it's in God and trust that he has my best interest and whatever he chooses to do, that is the best, you know, outcome for my life. Praise God. Um, do we have any other, any other? Yes, Brother Ben. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, what I took away from that, uh, from last week uh, teaching, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And something that was ringing in my head if in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4, the Bible says, The just shall live by his faith. That is, if you take the faith away from the just, then a just, no matter what is making that person to be just if you take away if the faith is dead in that just that means it's no longer alive. i don't know maybe you understand what i'm saying that it is just shall live by his faith if the faith now if it just now has no more faith if if, 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 if somebody that used to be just is just by following the word of god by obeying the word of god if his faith is tampered with and now he's dealing with a dead faith then I believe it's a dead, I mean, the, then he can't live anymore because what keeps a just man alive in God is his faith in God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, do we have any other, any, it's Youth Sunday, by the way, so I want our youths to also chip in a thing or two. Um, Ebon, do you want to? Praise God. Um, 
Last week we talked about the shield of faith. So we started off with talking about what faith was practically um, and not just what it says in Hebrews 11. And then we talked about faith as a shield. And I think one thing that I took away from last week was the fact that faith is based on the word of God, right? So we don't just manufacture um, faith based on, you know, what you desire or what you want or what you think, but what the word of God says. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Praise the Lord. And, um, Sister Carol also mentioned something we talked about last week, that faith is not necessarily on the result. So the fact that you received the answer, sorry, you did not receive the answer to what you were believing God for does not necessarily mean that you didn't have faith. And we looked into that um, by looking through Hebrews 11, how the Bible says that some of the people um, that were mentioned in you know, that hall of faith did not receive what was promised. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's say it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for the contribution. So today, like I said, we'll be discussing the helmet of salvation. Um, we'll go back to our lesson text, which is Ephesians 6. Um, if we can start from 10 to 18. Do Ephesians. Have, okay. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can make your stand against the devil's evils, against the devil's scheme. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this world's darkness, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you can stand, you can be able to stand your ground. And having done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with a breastplate of righteousness arrayed and with your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace in addition to all this take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying in the spirit at all times with every kind of prayer and petition to this end stay alert with all perseverance in your prayers for all the saints amen and can we also read um, Isaiah 59, verse 17? Isaiah 59, verse 17. And someone else can open to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 8. Isaiah 59, verse 17. He put on righteousness as his body armor and placed the helmet of salvation on his head. He clothed himself with the robe of vengeance and wrapped himself in the cloak of divine passion. Can we read First Thessalonians five verse eight? First Thessalonians five eight. It says, "But since we belong to this day, let us be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and the helmet of our hope of salvation." Amen. And um, we have a lot of scriptures to read, so just bear with us. Um, can we read Psalm one forty verse seven? O sovereign Lord, the strong one who rescued me. You protected me on the day of battle. And also, can we read um, Psalms 98, verse 2 and 3? Psalm 98, verse 2 and 3. The Lord has announced his victory and has revealed his righteousness to every nation. He has remembered his promise to love and be faithful to Israel. The ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Amen. Amen. So, so if you if you look at the common thread across the scriptures we just read, it, it's all talking. There is a central word, which is the helmet of salvation, the hope, the assurance of our salvation. And according to Ephesians four, we've seen that that is um, an armor of God. That is an armor that we are supposed to put on. Um, in, because we do not know when the evil day will come. I think for me, even as we were reading, looking at Ephesians 6, I, you know, what keeps coming to my mind is, man, nobody knows when the evil day will come. So even though it seems like, oh God, we have to put on this and put on this and put on this, it's like, yeah, it's better because when the evil day comes, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have the time to even start trying, okay, where is, my, where is this armor? Where is that armor? 
So there's the injunction that we, we, we put it on and we stay ready because nobody knows when the evil day will come. Um, so today, again, we're talking about the helmet of salvation. Um, before we go into that as an armor, who can tell us what a helmet is? What is an, uh, a helmet? Or who wears a helmet here at some point during the course of their week? I'm a biker. I, I drive my bicycle, so I have to put on my helmet. And I, I know it's not a fa I, I know it's not for fashion because it doesn't look too good. I'd rather not wear my helmet and maybe wear my hat. But um, the government has asked us to wear helmets for a reason. So why do we wear helmets? Why or where, who wears a helmet? Does anyone wear a helmet like me? No. Nobody drives a bicycle here, a motorcycle, nothing. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Okay, so so what is the use of a helmet? Why why do we wear a helmet? Can anyone tell us why do people wear a helmet? Why are you supposed to wear a helmet? Protect to protect your head from when you fall and hit your head on the floor, ground. It protects your head because your head is where you have your brain, and the brain is the um, powerhouse of the whole body. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, any other person? This side of the room, we're not speaking at all. I can see from talk of in her eyes. Um, Dina, please. It was a question I was jokingly asking, and she said I should ask it. I said, well, like, with helmets, like, you don't sleep with your helmet, right? Like, so, like, how does that come into fact with what we are discussing like is it okay to take it off and put it back on like if you're using the analogy of putting it on when you're riding your bike that's a good question and i think we're going to get to that point as we go through the study but that's a good question so i think it's something we should keep in our hearts do we take off our helmet at some point in the day since i mean we don't drive the bike inside the house right and um, that's a good question but you can fall inside your house right Exactly. So we're going to talk about it as we as we go forward. And one thing I'll just put out there is, you know, when I put on my helmet and I drive my bike, the helmet doesn't really stop me from falling, right? The helmet really does not. It's there, but the the, the use of the helmet is that just in case I fall, that it, there is that protection that I would not get fatally injured from the fall. So it pretty much um, helps me minimize injury to my head. And so when we talk about the helmet of salvation, which we're going to go into for the details, um, our, our brain, our, our brain is to the body just the same way the mind is to the soul, right? So when we cover, when we protect our brain physically with a helmet, we also need to protect our mind. Um, because again, we know the, the the mind is really the seat of the soul. It is what controls our soul. And when the enemy wants to attack, we know you know his favorite spot is our mind. So you know we have to keep our mind protected. And the scripture is giving us an armor to protect our mind, which is that helmet of of salvation. Um, do you guys want to add anything? Um, uh, you know the. The helmets, when we think about it as an armor, when a person maybe is involved in an accident and they are pronounced brain dead, it doesn't matter if the organs work. It doesn't matter if you know their heart is still beating or their kidney can process. The fact that they are brain dead, they are technically clinically dead, right? And so the brain is in the head. Having having a helmet helps the rest of your body, even though you're just protecting one part being the head. But protecting that part guarantees the continuous functioning of the rest of the body. And that is what salvation is for us as believers, right? When, we, when we're when we saved as, peop, as, as Christians, faith comes out of salvation. 
the gospel of peace comes out of salvation. The belt of truth comes out of salvation. The righteousness of God is from salvation. And that, that is why the helmet is, is super important. And I just wanted to say before we go in that salvation is the helmet. Right? Just so that we're not getting confused about helmet of and the salvation, the fact that you're saved, it stands as a helmet. Just the way we've been talking about how faith is a shield, how righteousness is a breastplate. Salvation is our helmet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Fidela. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to add also that, you know, um, we're talking about this clothing, the spiritual clothing. And we're talking about the helmet of salvation. You know, helmet, you were talking about, helmet is not something you wear every day, like you wear a tie or whatever. Helmet is necessary. And as we were talking, the picture that comes to my mind is when, when you go to a construction site, the, it's there, boldly written. If you don't have a helmet, or hard, hard, uh, hard hat, you can't go in there. There's a reason for it. As Christians, we are soldiers. We've been described as soldiers. One of the most important uh, attire that a soldier wears is a helmet. And Brotoyosi asked the question, can we put it off? As a soldier, if you are in the war front, even if you want to catch a few minutes of sleep you cannot afford to take off your helmet and that's how important the helmet is to a Christian we cannot afford to put it off praise God and I think that's that's an answer to the question that um, Tracy asked and just adding to that that we're we're in a battlefield constantly life is a battle we are in a we're in a battlefield and as a soldier in a battle, you cannot take off your helmet. I was listening to a story yesterday, and it's about a soldier that was in a battle, and you know he wore, he had his helmet on, and he was shot. Right, he was shot, but then the helmet sort of protected him, you know, from the shot. So he he took off the helmet to look at the bullet and analyze it, and in that process of taking it out, he got shot in the head again. And then that was what actually killed him because that split moment where he took off the helmet, then he got shot again. So as Christians, we know we're in a spiritual battle. And as long as we're in this world, we're in a battle. And and so because we're constantly in a battle 247, even when you're in, you're in bed, even when you're sleeping, you're actually in a battle. Right? And so it is imperative that we always, you know, as a matter of life and death, have a uh, a helmet on, but not just a helmet, that we have every single thing on. You know, I pray God to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, sure. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to also add quickly that you can't wear someone else's helmet. So it's not a case where you can say, I can't find my helmet, so let me quickly borrow your own. No, it's custom made for you, and it has to be strapped on like tightly, right? So salvation is not something that can be shared. It's not like, oh, my father is saved therefore or my husband is saved therefore we're all going to heaven together so it's something that comes personally you know when you give your life to jesus praise the lord hallelujah and i just think it's 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 actually even interesting in isaiah 59 that we read verse 17 talking about jesus that he also put on a put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head you know this is jesus we're talking about and the bible describes that he he also put on, you know, that helmet of salvation. So that tells us how important salvation is in our journey of faith, how important salvation is in our life. Pray God to help us to put on that helmet constantly in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've talked about a helmet. But what is salvation? So we can go into that helmet of salvation. What is salvation? I know it's... I guess it's an easy question. What is salvation? How many people are saved here? If you're saved, can you raise your hands up? Winda is saved. Winda, what is salvation? <laughs> um, salvation is a process of us giving our lives to Christ. 
yeah so just the yeah process of asking <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, what is salvation? Anyone wants to add to that? All the people that are saved, no one is saved there. We're all saved, right? What is salvation? Anyone? Okay. Ebon, do you want to tell us what salvation is? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, so the word salvation just simply means deliverance. Well, in the context of the Christian walk, um, the Christian faith, salvation is... Um, pretty much deliverance from the power of sin and that how Jesus actually delivered us or redeemed us from the power of sin and that, you know, and, you know, funny enough, I was discussing with um, some of these witches yesterday that in the morning, yesterday morning, I was thinking about the concept of like Jesus, how, you know, the Bible says he came to save us, but he didn't just come to save us. He came to heal us. And the Bible calls him healer. The Bible calls him the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and the soon coming King. So all of that is actually encompassed in salvation. Jesus Christ came us to redeem us from the power of sin and death, you know, and to restore the relationship we have, we originally had with God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, so we're just going to, okay, yes, ma'am. Um, praise the Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. Um, salvation is not a one, t it's not just a one-time act of, um, we all know the day we got saved, but, and it's not just the hope of being saved at the end, staying with the master at Jesus' feet. It's an ongoing thing. It's a continuous thing. Um, our souls might be saved, but our minds might not be saved. So salvation is, you know, that renewing of the mind, making our mind agree with the spirit, with what God has already done. So it's a, it's a, it's a continuous process. It's not that, okay, I was saved, 20 years ago and then that's it it has to, we have to walk out the bible even talked about walking it out so it's a it's a continuous process that we do with the word of god with prayer with all the other things that we've been talking about amen um, i guess uh, just to get into it um can we read philippians 2 verse 12 philippians 2 verse 12 Anyone also who can read from the congregation? Anyone can read? Philippians. No. Philippians 2.12. This is therefore, my beloved, just as you've always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now even more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. So, again, we, we see in scriptures that salvation is a, it's an ongoing thing. You have to continually work it out. And not just work it out, you have to work it out with it, with, it, with fear and trembling. You have to safeguard your salvation. Amen. Um, can we also read um, John three sixteen to 18? And if we can read it in the Amplified, it would be great. John 3, 16. John three sixteen to 18. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son, so that whoever believes and trusts in him as savior shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to judge and condemn the world, that is to initiate the final judgment of the world, but that the world may be saved through him. Whoever believes and has decided to trust in him as personal Savior and Lord is not judged. For this one, there is no judgment, no rejection, no condemnation. But the one who does not believe and has decided to reject him as personal Savior and Lord is judged already. That one has been convicted and sentenced because he has not believed and trusted in the name of the one and only begotten Son of God, the one who is truly unique the only one of his kind, the one who alone can save him. Amen. And can we also read Acts 16, 30 to 31? And someone else can open to Romans 10, 9 to 10. Acts 16, 30 to 31 says, And after he brought them out of the inner prison, he said, Saz, what must I do to be saved? And they answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, and entrust yourself to him, and you will be saved, you and your household, if they also believe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Romans 10, 9-10. 
If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Amen. Um, Romans 8 verse 2. But I'm just going to start from one, just to give us a bit of context. So there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the love of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the love of sin and death. Amen. And um, can we also read Isaiah 61, verse 1, 2, 3? Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed and commissioned me to bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted, to proclaim release from confinement and condemnation to the physical and spiritual captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the fav favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance and retribution of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion the following, to give them a turban instead of dust on their heads, a sign of mourning, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment expressive of praise instead of a disheartened spirit, so that they will be called trees of righteousness, strong, magnificent, distinguished for integrity, justice, and right standing with God, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Amen. Ephesians 2, 8-9. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. Amen. So um, from all the scripture readings, do we, do we have a little bit of a context, at least since no one wanted to raise their hand what salvation is? Um, Brother Ben. Praise the Lord. Like I feel salvation is like what actually brings you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom, you are now in the kingdom of God. If you look at the story of Job, because if an, an element, like you said, protects you from when you fall, that is, there is the likelihood of somebody riding a bicycle or a race car driver having an accident, and that element actually protects them from injury to their brain and all those kind of things. That is, there is the likelihood of somebody falling or something happening. You know, Satan came to Jesus Christ and said, if you are the son of God, because, you know, a lot of time as Christian, it doesn't mean that something, mistake cannot happen in life. Somebody can just find that overnight they lost all their investment. And somebody, and the devil will say, well, you go, don't go to church if you're actually a child of God, because we, the battle we are in is not actually a physical battle. It goes on in your mind. And if the enemy is able to get to your mind to say, but I don't believe you are saved. Because, if, because I mean, the, 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 the friends of Job, they said to him, because if you look at the story of Job, what most of the question that was coming to him was that, actually, if you are a righteous man, what you are going through, you should not go through it. If Job was a man that was not sure in his God, if Job was a man that was, because he said, he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. He was a man that was shaky. His friend would have just destabilized and said, well, what is going to, your children died, you lost your business, you lost this one, and you are, you are saying you're a man of integrity. If this man was not sure of his God, the Bible says those that, that do know their God, they will be stronger. And they do a spot. If Job was not a man that knew the God he was serving, because of the problem that he was going through, he would just maybe go to bed, get to bed. Maybe he was not saved. Maybe I was not actually serving God. That is why salvation is very important. You believe in God no matter what comes your way. That is, we say, it is not about things. It is not about feeling. It is about what is happening. It's just your faith in God. But you know, like what I was saying last week, they believed in God. They had faith. But yet, they did not get the promises. And that does not mean they were not children of God or they were not serving God. So I believe that's why salvation is very important. 
important. That is, we might make mistakes, we might fall. Things might not even go the way that we are going. But it doesn't mean that God is not for us or we are not safe. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And and thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful comment. And um, so we can see what salvation is right now. It is what Christ has done for us already by his blood. He has redeemed us back to God. He has saved us. Um, but the Bible says for us to enter into you know, that redemption, we have to believe with our hearts. We And then we confess it. And then we are saved. But it is possible that, you know, we can be saved. But the enemy would, like Brother Ben just said, still question you. Do you think you're saved? Yeah, look at what you did. You, you, after everything you've done, do you think God can save you? So, so the, the enemy can sow seeds of doubt in our hearts with regards to our salvation. And especially when... When that evil day comes, when, you know, nothing is working for you, like we saw in the life of Job, in one day, you know, literally his whole world turned upside down. And and the first question that would come to you, do you are you really a child of God? Is it, is it how God treats his children? You know, or, you know, what have you done? So I think this is what the devil does, and this is why the scripture is telling us we always have to put on that helmet and first Thessalonians talks about that assurance that hope of salvation um i pray that god will really help us because i think it's something that we, we, we really don't know how important it is until we get to the point where we begin to question certain things that's when we realize oh my god amen do you want oh it's just fear. praise the lord um what just dropped in my heart is the fact that the re I think this is in, in Ephesians 2, verse 8. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. What just dropped in my heart is that the fact that we are not saved by keeping the law. Because if we if we are to keep the law, then maybe we'll, we'll be able to boast and say, okay, I kept this law, that's why I'm saved. And the amazing thing um, is when, when you look at what happened between the Lord Jesus and the rich young ruler that came to meet him, he said, what can I, I said, um, I can't remember this question again, but the Lord Jesus said, he asked him if he had kept all the laws and he said yes, and he still told him that he was lacking one thing. So, we are it's a gift and it, it, you know i can give you something and you can decide to take it or leave it and for you to take it and say oh this thing is is precious is by faith and that is what the 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 bible is telling us god jesus has saved us it, we we don't have to do anything what i mean we don't have to do anything is is we are not saved by the works we have done, but because he has given us this gift. Praise God. Amen. Do you want to say answer to that more? Well, um, you know, based on our lesson text, um, the KJV version said, take on the helmet of God, which means to receive. Right? The other one said, put on. So it's already there, you put it on. But when you take the helmet of salvation, meaning that you are receiving that salvation from God, it is God that is giving it to you. And without this helmet of salvation, you can't, you can't face the devil in your power. It's not, it's not, you can't withstand him. You can't, you can't you know, face him and, and stand. It's that helmet of salvation that gives you the stability to even stand and face him because if the devil can tempt God himself by asking him if you are the son of God, who are we that he can't just, you know, mess us up around, right? But that salvation, that 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 act of God giving us salvation is also giving us victory. Because what Jesus did on the cross was finished. Every single thing that the enemy could ever do, Jesus finished it on the cross. So when we put on the helmet of salvation, we put on that victory. It is that victory that we can stand and face the enemy because without it, we, could, we can't even be 
talking to him, right? He's on a different level than us as human beings. But salvation is victory. And that is why the devil will attack our minds. Because if you don't know what Jesus has done, you will fall to the lies of the enemy. The devil knows that this work is done. Jesus did not mince words. He said, it is finished. So literally every single thing is finished. But if you don't know that, if you're not convicted of that truth, then you will fall before the enemy. And I pray that that would not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you want to add Praise the Lord. You know, um, when just reading through Ephesians 6, the Bible talks about putting on the whole armor of God be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy and also putting it on in preparation for the evil day you know and i was just thinking it about it in terms of the evil day um not just in terms of like being saved but also salvation in terms of like going through a trying time going through a difficult time um just the assurance that god is actually going to you know help you in those difficult seasons as well you know the bible says you know, Paul had something that was very, he had a season where it was very difficult. And the Bible says he saw the Lord three times. And the Bible says, my, you know, God had told him, my grace is sufficient for you and my strength is made perfect in your weakness, right? So I think of the helmet of salvation in that sense as well, that God is going to see you through. The Bible says a righteous man will fall seven times, right? But the Lord God keeps him even in, those, um, in, in that period. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. Amen. Um, I just wanted to emphasize on salvation being a gift and a privilege from God. Um, as we were talking now, I remembered, um, um, you know, the Bible says that, um, I was talking, I was, sorry, I was reminded of the um, story of Daniel that I've been studying this week. And what came to mind, you know, it, God can present you with salvation and you not choose it. You know, the Bible says, choose life that you may live. You know, and remember the story of Nebuchadnezzar and, you know, how God was proving himself through Daniel to him, but he still went back to his God. He still went back to his things. He had to literally run mad or go crazy before he could acknowledge and receive the salvation of Christ. You know, so we should not take the salvation for granted and um talking about doubts you know that's where um the spirit of god comes in when you are saved you know and there are certain things certain steps that you need to take you know continually feeding your mind with the things of god that will help you strengthen your faith because you know as a new believer it can be difficult or um should i say tough because all the things you've put your mind to in the past will begin to seriously creep up, you know. So that's where the replacement now comes in, to help you, to make sure that your salvation, your helmet is sturdy and uh, latched on properly. Praise God. Praise God. And and also for me, um, I, I was just meditating on this helmet of salvation yesterday, and I remember when I just got saved, and I remember I went through this mental battle of am I really saved, you know, and 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 the, you know the, it's so interesting that the enemy knows the logos, he knows the scripture, so he he can twist it in order to get to you, he can twist. You know, you, you, I remember in that time, it's like, ah, Franklin, are you really saved? Like, after all those things you've done, you think God can use you? After all those things you've done, ah, you think there's really just like that, you, you're, you're now free from the consequences. And I remember, you know, one thing I kept, I, I'd always kept saying, what, ah, but the scripture had said, he that is in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, everything is new. And I kept muttering. So each time that thought came to me, I would, I remember, I, I, I easily said that scripture over and over for maybe a thousand times, easily or even more. Like I would constantly, um, I would constantly go back to, to it. And, you know, John three sixteen, when we read it in the Amplified, it said there is no condemnation, no rejection, no judgment. 
and you know this is those are the things that the enemy uses to to get to us to keep us in bondage and i believe if the enemy can keep you in that state of rejection or condemnation he can always take you back And when what Jesus did on the cross it you know when the enemy comes to you again and you know tries to to poke at your salvation, you know you go back to him with the Word of God with that hope of salvation that you know whatever has happened has happened, and in Christ you are brand new, praise God, hallelujah, mm, praise God. So we're going to talk about the application of this helmet. And um, we've already spoken about how we know we're saved. I'll just add one more scripture. Romans 8, verse 16. Your, uh, your knowledge of your salvation is through the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I'll read it from the message translation. It says, this resurrection life you received from God is not a timid, grave-tending life. It's, advent it's adventurously expectant, greeting God with a childlike, what's next, Papa? God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. We know who he is and we know who we are, father and children. And this is what the enemy tries to debate because it is true whether you believe it or not. Right, and the be the belief in this relationship and this finished work of God is what will set you free. But when you've received Christ, it has happened. You just need to believe it. Praise the Lord. So now the application of this helmet. The first thing is to be born again, because the helmet salvation is a helmet. If you're not born again, you don't have the helmet. And we've said it before that you just become meat for the enemy. Um, a person who is not saved is walking in darkness. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone that, that follows me will not have to walk in darkness, but they will walk in light and the light leads them to eternal life. So when a person doesn't have Christ, they are in darkness and they are being led to eternal death. Right, so first step is being born again, accepting Jesus into your life as your personal Savior and as your Lord, and accepting and embracing every single thing he did on the cross for you. Because it's like what we said, it's a gift, and it's the greatest gift of all time. So why wouldn't we receive it? And also as believers, you know, let's be encouraged to also tell people about this light, tell people, show people the light, but also tell them about it because they are in darkness. And the truth of the matter is anybody that doesn't have Jesus is going to hell. He said it, and that's exactly what is going to happen. So it should be that compassion for people, compassion and the love of God. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. So th this work is already done. You don't have to do anything other than lead people to the work that is already done. Praise the Lord. Another application of your salvation is growing in your knowledge of Christ, right? You, th this salvation is like what Pastor Ola said, it is continuous. It's not one time. 
it, it didn't happen 20 years ago and you're just living la vida loca it's something you continuously have to do and how do you work out your salvation is with is with fear and trembling is with learning and staying with the word of god because the the truth of who you are is in the word of god so you can be saved but without that knowledge of that truth you're still going to be meat for the enemy right the bible talks about who we are it's i think in romans it says sin has no dominion over you it's such a powerful statement when we think about it we don't have to sin you can be confronted with sin and you don't have to do it because you have power to not do it. It doesn't have power over you. That is a, it's so liberating and, that, and the power in that is so strong. But without the knowledge of it, sin will always have dominion over the individual. And it's something that we need to apply in our daily lives. When you're faced with anger, when you're faced with different sins in different forms because everyone is different, you need to tell yourself, I... I technically don't have to do this, right? It, it doesn't have control over me. And that is the victory that you're utilizing. But when you don't study the scripture, when we, um, you know, miss out on fellowship with bread, we miss out on so much. We do ourselves and our souls a disservice. Praise the Lord. Does anyone have... Um, I was just even going to add to that point that the scripture says that faith comes by hearing. And we have to constantly hear what the Lord has said, what the Lord is saying. So even with, with that, we you know part of part of how how do we apply this is to constantly renew our mind, like you said, through through the word of God. And as we keep on hearing the word of God, it builds our faith. That that seed of doubt is being eliminated, you know, in our heart as a result of the word that comes in and stays in. Amen. Amen. Um did we have I think I saw a hand. Okay. Yes, we'll um, we'll just continue. And so, how? And it's something. If we notice the application of the armor we've been talking about has been the same. You know, growing in your knowledge with God. Um, at the beginning of this year, about being rooted in Christ, having your roots go deep, because when life happens, which it will, you need that sturdiness, that stability in Christ, to you know avoid. Avoid you from being uprooted. Another th thing is having an intimate relationship with Jesus. You know, when we were talking about this in Sunday school, it, it seems like it goes without saying. An intimate relationship does not fall on you as a believer. It's just like how you develop a close relationship with your friends, with your spouse, if you're married. You know, if you guys continue to go in a certain direction, you just end up being roommates. Or you just end up not talking to that person for a long time. There is intentionality that goes with intimacy. You have to choose to talk to that person, if not Satan will come in between you guys, you know. And when we talk about the helmet of salvation, I think everyone was saying that it needs to be snug. And how this was how this was ministered to me is as women we wear wigs, right? And in your wig there's a strap that helps it to be snug. If that strap is not there, or if that strap is loosened, and there is wind that is blowing, <laughs> I will just leave it like that. We know what can happen, right? And our head shapes are different. These wigs are done to the shape of your head, so you can't wear, you just know it's customized. It's how the helmet is. If the helmet isn't strapped, if you see a Roman soldier, they have the strap underneath them. If it's not strapped, and wind of life starts to blow, the helmet will go off, right? Or if you just, you know, wear the helmet as like a fashion cap on your, it's not fashion, it's to protect you. But if you're just, and, and that fashion cap thing is when you're saved, but you still kind of want to be cool with the world, so you're not like taking it seriously. When life happens and when the devil comes, which he always does, because he doesn't have any other thing to do, it won't protect right it's 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 it won't do its job of protecting you 
And so it's important for it to be strapped. We've talked about the remaining arm as if your breastplate isn't strapped. And if it's flying everywhere, you can be injured. If your belt of truth isn't connected, if it's not snug on you, you know, you will fall for the wiles of the enemy. And that's all we've been talking about is having Jesus snug on you. You need to hold on to him because your life, where you're going to eternally, depends on it tremendously, right? And so developing that intimate relationship with Christ, um, coming for fellowship, studying your Bible helps you to know what to do, how to live. How do I wear this helmet? Do I take it off when I'm sleeping? Or Lord, this helmet is becoming loose, maybe by way of what you're taking in, by way of how you're living. And God will strap that thing right back on you. But if you don't have that close relationship with him, it will be hard for you to maintain that helmet for the day of evil, which is every day for a believer. Sure, yeah. Everyone go Praise the Lord. You know, um, you know, it's interesting because early this morning I was actually thinking about the aspect of intimacy as well. Um, and I would relate it to the aspect of salvation. If we I don't know if anybody has watched this movie, Nights with the King, um, which was retelling the story of Esther. So there's a scene in the movie where before Esther goes to meet the king to petition for Israel, um, the eunuch says to her, going into the court of a king is not the same thing as going into a, the bedroom of a man. That's what he said, right? And so just to think about this aspect of salvation, even in everyday life, like if you don't have a close relationship with God, you know, something that you'd have gotten inside the bedroom of a man is what you'd have to fast three days just so that you can enter the court of a king. So just even talking about this aspect of salvation, even, you know, the Bible says that they who know God shall be strong and do exploit. I, I even find that sometimes when situation comes in, like it's your knowledge. Yes, for out of it flows the issues of life. And I remember Paul telling Timothy to stay away from certain kind of conversations, stay away from certain things that would lead to ungodliness. I think we have to really guard our hearts. We have to guard our salvation because there are certain conversations, certain things that we listen to, that we watch, that we hear, that can, that 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 would try to move us away, to sway us away from 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 where you know what god has given to us in salvation so we have to protect our hearts and part of protecting it will be staying away from certain conversations certain you know shows certain music you know ideas you know that sounds good but you know all 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 they are targeted at is actually moving us from that place of salvation amen and um, in conclusion, having a sound understanding of the word of God is, is an application of the helmet because as we said when we started talking about spiritual warfare, this series is that devil's number one um, ammo is deceit, right? And the Bible calls him a liar. So even when you can just quote things like, you're a liar, back to him when these thoughts are coming because it's a battle of words in your mind when you can just respond to him if you don't know anything else at least just say he's a liar because that's what jesus said you know having that sound understanding will set you free and when you know everyone's talking about how life happens when we first started this series one of the things that we had established was that satan will come and ask you and try to attack the love of God in your heart. So he'll try to make you say, God, do you love me? I don't think you love me because this is happening. And, you know, I read a story that a, a person had a lot of bad things happen and they were crying to God and asking, Lord, where were you when all these things were happening? And God answered, the same place I was when Jesus was on the cross. 
on the throne. He never left. So if his own son can be on that cross, who are we not to go through trials and tribulation? But we should know, the Bible says that uh, you cannot ask your father for bread and he will give you stone or fish and he will give you a snake. And so if your earthly father, who is wicked by God's standard, can give you good things, how much more? Scripture says that every hair on your head, they are numbered. It doesn't drop to the ground without him knowing. If, a, if an ordinary sparrow falls to the ground and God is aware, who is... How how can't he be aware of your situation, right? And he says he will withhold no good thing from his children. This is in the word of God. So understanding that God will not give me poison. God will not give me a snake if I'm asking for a fish. God cares too much about me. And if I was the last person on earth, he would still come. Having that deep conviction of the love of the Father for you is a helmet and it will save you in the day of trouble because even though it doesn't look like there is an opening you know that there is a God that rules in the affairs of men and that is the God that loves you praise the Lord let's bow down our hearts as we pray Heavenly Father we thank you for this day we thank you for your faithfulness your goodness and kindness Lord we just thank you for just, you know, keeping each and every one of us alive to see you this day. We thank you because the Bible says it's by the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. We say to you, be all the glory. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this word we've heard, oh God. We thank you because we know you've brought the right word, oh God, for this season in our lives. We're praying even as we go forth from here, oh God. We're asking you, allow these words, oh God, to find room in the, on the good soil of our hearts. Lord, we know these words are going to be tested this week. We are praying for the grace of God to be able to withstand the enemy and come out victorious with the glory of your holy name. We thank you, Lord. We pray even as we continue, O God, with the service. We are asking you, help us prepare our hearts, O God, that it's to minister to the Lord, minister unto you and also to receive as well. We give you glory, honor, and adoration. For in the mighty name of Jesus, we've prayed.